I found this humorous. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Mike Levin on Monday, March 27th, 2023. And I started my morning journal entry. And it got so interesting, I figured I'd share you in. Things are hardly worth doing anymore unless they have some sort of snowballing effect, like compounding returns that produces some sort of exponential results. The reason is that it's getting really competitive out there. AIs will surely do everything that does not honestly and truly require the human touch. The problem with this approach is that almost everything worth doing is in fact difficult, or else everyone would be doing it. This leads to a tricky problem. What do I do in my job capacity at Moz and in this life and in this world and as a dad and as a lover of cats and unsure about mission and purpose but zeroing in on it for sure. So I figured what I really need to do is to define a project that I can carry out in the following ways. First, writing in my private journal. You're not even seeing that. But that's where I do truly open-ended brainstorming, wacky, no limits. And then there's this public journal you're seeing me in, slightly refined thoughts, still rough, and a very small audience out there. I don't know who watches this, but kudos to you. And then there's the private YouTube stuff I do. They're experiments that are only for my fellow co-workers because I might be giving out proprietary knowledge and information. And then there's my public YouTubes, which are mostly on my personal YouTube account, probably where you're watching this, mostly still raw, unedited, also quite practice. And then there's going to be this, part of the, the final you know, outcome of these, uh, of this, which is refined uh, for the general public in so far as possible, because my stuff is still kind of, I don't know, esoteric, eclectic, strange, technical, but necessary. So what is that project? As I watch what's going on with AI, chat, GPT, Bing and Bard, I'm noticing the gold rush that disgusts me. These gold rushes surrounding new technology platform opportunities bring out the worst in people like domain squatting and other low creativity, low effort races by people who could never make it without the early mover advantage, right? So that's an observation. I, now it gets up to where I was at when I thought, you know, I should really share this because it's getting very interesting, just like the OpenAI plugin ecosystem. Now, the thing about it is it's generic input and output, but with OpenAI in the picture. And so OpenAI has a chance to read and craft, you know, the input and output, but in all other ways, it's really just standard coding. And that has prompted me to bring you guys on board as I articulate for the very first time. Well, one last observation. I don't want to miss out on the learnings of Copilot. Is it Microsoft or OpenAI? Check, and I just did. It's GitHub, so Microsoft, right? So I'll use it in Vim, right? So I'll do co the Copilot thing in Vim because not everyone and their cousin is going to be doing that in public, and that'll be of some interest. It's not like people are giving up Vim anytime soon, and it's not like Microsoft Copilot is insignificant. You, you must have that experience in order to, at least the free trial. But that's not what really this is about. That's the final observation before I say, I need a general web scraper. Ah, the typing is so slow. I think this might be uh, OBS, Open Broadcast Studio. So I need a general web scraper. And since this is so slow catching up with my typing, ah, I gotta think about a faster machine or diagnose why the heck that's just far too slow. There's no reason. 
it should be that slow in recording me. It's typing a period right there. Providence is conspiring against me. <laughs> what's going on? Sudden system bog down. You know what's probably happening? It's probably a Windows update going on in the background. Although it's Monday and not, what is it, Patch Tuesday. Maybe I missed the last service pack. So this is completely unacceptable. And that's only in Vim where that um, slowdown is occurring. So in the spirit of unstoppability, I'm just going to type in Notepad. And then I'll transpose it back if this uh, lets me type fast and I'll finish the thought because it's an important thought. I want to get it out there. And maybe Providence is stopping me because it doesn't want the copycats all jumping on board because it's such a good idea. So, general web scraper. But, right, it's not just a general web scraper. It can do things that none of the sandboxed Python code execution environments and made available. Oh, I got to do manual wrap wrapping. Okay. Made available through, drum roll please, OpenAI plugins. Okay. So, uh, I, in specific, in particular, I want to surf from my or any IP. So that's uh, either local machine or originating, originating traffic or bouncing through some sort of, you know, proxy or something. And run a full-fledged unbounded web browser for browser automation scraping in a way that's very difficult in sandboxed cloud environments They don't want to give you all the resources it takes for browser-based automation, right? They'll let you use requests, URL, lib, of course, because it's built in. And maybe HTTPX if you're lucky. But they're unlikely to let you surf as Chrome logged in with your Google account, Edge logged in as Microsoft account. Etc. You get the idea, right? So, this is a fully unbounded web scraper kit. It's a kit. Because remember that original uh, I.O. Um, thing, right? I'm making something that it works a lot like a command line interface command, i.e. a Linux shell command. It will let you write scripts whose genuine browser
and genuine web scraping output can be mm, fed to open AI responses retrieved and used for subsequent browsing automation commands all right so it is a fully unbounded web scraper kit fusk fully unbounded scraper kit fusk No, there's already fuskers and fusking. Fully unbounded web scraper kit. Fully unbounded unbounded web browser. Foopsk. Fully un no. Foo. It's it's Fusk. Fusk. Fully unbounded unbounded web scraper kit. So just like there's uh, in the olden days, there was ways to uh, do <laughs> fusking and there was a fusker and you could do fusking. I am going to innovate fusking. It's fusker, F-U-W-S-K-E-R, fusker and fusking. I've got to keep myself from using my VI, my Vim uh, keys, which is a way of using local enhanced well, it's enhanced, unbounded, unbounded web scraping abilities. Um, in ways that are difficult on the cloud and can produce results that are highly competitive in that snowballing compounding returns away I discussed. Speaking of disgust and disgusted that Vim became so friggin unresponsive so I can select all I can go back here server connection error you know what happened it lost connection to the Linux in the background oh I may not even have that saved so I'll save this to my desktop and this is talk about Providence right I advocate uh, very much for uh, using Linux to back end your uh, Jupiter session. But things like this can occur. Things like this can occur. If Linux dies in the background for some reason, so does all your Linux terminals, your, your Jupiter lab. And that's what happens. So I'll keep this here as a reminder to me to work out any stability issues that, that remain. And uh, this is a plan. This is F. U W S K Fusker Fusker F U W S K E R Fusker All right it's a hot idea You might not really see what this is going to ultimately mean but trust me it's going to be some very very interesting web tutorials It's going to have to do with SEO all right, so let's capture this last thing as a bonus. If you do use Linux in the background to run your Jupyter Lab, uh, you may have some flakiness or stability issues in the near term. I expect it's going to all go away because Microsoft cannot allow that to happen. This is because I'm on the bleeding edge and I'm doing such things as... Um, running Linux services full-time in the background. I'm running Linux 
daemons. And that's how Jupiter is being served. It's a Linux service that started up with the Windows version of Linux. That's not what you're seeing here. What you're seeing here is the um, Windows PowerShell, which lets you do WSL commands. And look at that. It's not even catching up with my typing. So I'm going to assume that everything that's going on here has to do with OBS performance because this does not uh, normally happen and I think it's because of the screen recording so I'm gonna wrap up there and I'll get back to you